Look at me now, popping out the same cherry six four with the motherfucking top down. I'm the game, nigga. Call your bitch she ain't home. She I'm a trasher slash rappers. Yeah, that's my occupation. I don't carry chump change. All I do is carry faces. This is Mark Bell, Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. We have questions to answer here today at the Power Project. The first question of today is from Rico Gags, my boy. Rico Gags is a family member, and he hits me up with questions from time to time. He is currently enjoying the usage of the slingshot and the hip circle, but his question is about squats and deadlifts, as always here at the Power Project. Even though everyone should care how much you bench, they don't always care how much you bench here at the Power Project. They're usually more interested in deadlifts. Deadlifts seems to be the biggest question normally. But this question is about squatting and deadlifting. Can you squat and deadlift in the same day? And the answer is, of course you can. The key factor in all of this, whenever you step foot into a gym, whether you're trying to gain 10 pounds on your bench or whether you're a fat soccer mom and you're trying to lose 20 pounds or whether you're trying to knock off your double chin or whether you're trying to, uh, whether you're trying to knock off some love handles or whether you're trying to increase the size of your pecs or increase the size of your quads or you're trying to become a power lifter, a weight lifter, a ninja, perhaps. Whatever the hell it is you are trying to do, whenever you go to train, you need to have an intent of the day, and you need to set some goals. And those goals have to be set before you step foot into the gym. Mike Menser, a great bodybuilder, one of the only bodybuilders in the history of bodybuilding to get a perfect score, he once said, as soon as people step foot in the gym, their IQ gets chopped in half. And I know, Power Project Army, I know you soldiers have seen that firsthand at, at the different health clubs you guys are in. So have a goal in mind, have an intent. So if we're going to deadlift or we're going to squat uh, in the same training session, then we need to have a goal. What's the goal? Is the goal to go heavy on both? Because that might not be that great of an idea to do heavy singles on both. However, if you think about it and you apply a little bit of knowledge to it, then of course, then of course you can do that. You can do triples. You can do singles. You can set to five. You can do uh, your deadlifts first, and then your squats and as assistance movement. You can do your squats first, and then your deadlifts as an assistance movement. It's done quite often at Super Training Gym in Sacramento, and no one has died from it. Right. Nobody has died from it. I had to think about it for a second. We've had a couple guys almost die from it, but nobody's died from it. So you can do it. It can be done. But always keep in mind, always set a goal for the day. Let's say your main goal is to, and, and an achievable goal, not a reach, something that you know for sure that you can do, even if you're sick or even if your dog dies or whatever the hell happens on that particular day, because life happens, right? We all have kids, we all have jobs, we all have shit to do, shit that bogs us down, stuff that gets in the way of training. And so set an attainable goal, something that you can actually do and something that's not a reach. And the reason why I say that is, let's say your max squat is um, 330 pounds. And say your intent and your goal, what you want to accomplish for this particular day, is to handle some heavy squats. So you go in there and you do 275 and then make a jump that's going to allow you to adjust on the fly. If you just jump right to 315 from 275 and your best squat ever is 330, that 315 may be shaky and you may not get the volume in that you're looking for. So I would start to make 20 pound jumps from there. I would do 275. I would do 295 after the 275, and then I would do like 315 at that point. And then if 315 goes well, then you gotta make a decision. Can I go for 335 today and go for a PR? Can I go for 340? Talk to your training partners, talk to a buddy, have someone film it. Um, you know, learn learn how that stuff feels and and try to make a good judgment call for yourself. But you're almost always your best bet, I would say 
almost always. I can't say always because it's good to take risks. And without great risk, you won't get great reward in some cases. But it's almost always best to be a little bit cautious. So what if you lifted 10 pounds less for the day? At least you did it the right way. At least you did it the proper way. And at least you didn't get hurt. You make the lift and you stutter and you shake around and you, you turn your squat into a good morning and you go, holy crap, I was kind of lucky to get out of that one. And maybe that's with uh, 325. And so what, it's five pounds less than your best ever, but maybe, maybe you're not quite at the strength level you were a few weeks ago. That happens. You know, we say here at the Power Project, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards, that kind of stuff. But... It's impossible to move forward all the time. It's impossible to get better every single time. Life happens. Things happen to people. People gain weight. People lose weight. People get in better shape. People get stronger. Um, all kinds of different things happen in your training that could lead to these types of things. Could be stressed out. Could be no, a million different things. But have a goal. Have an intent for the day. The goal for the day is to handle something heavy. So you did 300 and maybe you did 330 and uh, maybe you can try for a PR if those things go well. But remember to have an obtainable goal, something you know for sure that you can do. After you do that, then you can go for a reach. Then you can go for a stretch. Then you can be a little bit cocky and you can try something big. Uh, the intent of the day is always crucial as well. That's going to kind of dictate, you know, what you're doing. You know, the intent would just be I'm going heavy. Uh, or I'm going light, or I'm doing speed work, or I'm just doing reps. And don't allow yourself to stray away from that intent of the day. It's always going to lead to a crappy workout, and it's always going to leave you feeling unsatisfied. Have goals that you can achieve, achieve them, and move on. Have an intent for the day, have something set, have a game plan. Almost like a teacher. A teacher goes in there, they go into their class to teach a certain, a certain uh, criteria for the day. Have a criteria mapped out on what you want to do. Not everything needs to be all mapped out, all perfect and everything, but have an idea in your head of what it is you want to try to do for the day. Achieve that and then move on. Uh, after you've done your heavy squat, maybe you have it planned out to where you want to take a heavy deadlift, but again, you know, have achievable goals in mind and uh, set yourself up for success. Don't allow yourself to make too big a jumps because that's when things get screwed up. Now, can you squat and deadlift twice in the same week? Of course you can. Again, as long as you're, as long as you're keeping these things in mind. What's the goal? Are you just practicing the squat? Because if on day one, <clears throat> you're squatting as heavy as possible and you, you hit 330 for three sets of one rep, and they're all pretty good grinders. Um, if, that's, if that's day one, uh, and then three days later, or two days later, let's say that was on Monday, and let's say on Wednesday you want to do a squat again. Can you practice your squat with 135 and work on your form and work on your technique and work on your timing? Could you even go up to 225 and possibly 275? I don't see a problem with that. Uh, a lot of guys have, have kind of switched to those types of training methods um, in order to perfect their technique. If you're a newer lifter, I would say that would be important to do that. Uh, you got squats followed by more squats and deadlifts followed by more deadlifts. And the best supplements for you are going to be lots of deadlifts, lots of squats, and lots of steak. That's going to be the key to success uh, early on. I myself... I uh, have benched three times a week. I have squatted three times a week. I have deadlifted three times a week. I have deadlifted. I have squatted twice in the same day. I have done bench sessions twice in the same day. I have done an arm session for six hours to try to slap an inch on my arms in one day. And of course it worked. You guys see the results right here. Look at those pipes. Things are ginormous. But, um... You know, you're going to have to learn some of this stuff for yourself. You're going to feel it out for yourself and feel what works best for you. Ultimately, it comes down to what's optimal. And what is normally optimal is to do, thing about, do things about once a week. Um, but other guys are finding out other things. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with practicing the movement and trying to learn the movement. Because a lot of times when you have an intent and you have a goal for the day, a lot of times you don't get to really practice the movement 
uh, in the same movement pattern that you would if you just went really, really light and you almost did not care about anything else except for the technique. So the technique would then become the intent of the day. So you can squat and deadlift twice in the same week. You can squat and deadlift twice in, in the, uh, you can squat and deadlift on, a, on the same training session. Um, I would say this also though, you can squat and deadlift twice in the same week and maybe even three times in the same week, but something's gonna give somewhere along the line if all those sessions are heavy. So you're gonna have to use your head. You're gonna have to go light, medium, heavy, or one day's heavy and one day's practice and something other, you know, you're gonna have to mix it up a lot in order to be able to do that. And uh, I don't think that's even really worth a worthwhile thing to, to do. Twice a week would be plenty. If you're trying to figure out the timing and try to figure out the exercise, uh, that's that's the most amount of times I think that you would want to do that. Now, somebody wrote in a question, uh, Zach, he had a question. He said he has no ass and no legs, and he wants to build them up. Best way to build them up, squats and deadlifts and lots of steak. Make sure you're eating, make sure you're resting, make sure you're hydrated, and make sure you're training your ass off. But squats followed by more squats and deadlifting uh, will definitely put some size on you. Use, uh, use, use heavy squats as well as squats as assistance exercise. Squat as low as you possibly can for three sets or four sets of about 15 reps and try to mix things up. Try pause squats, try one and a quarter squats, really mix things up. Give your body a new challenge, a new stimulus. Things like leg presses, things like leg extensions, things like leg curls have always been tried and true and shown to pack on some size on some bodybuilders in the past. You're going to have to get a pump if you want to make muscles larger. Um, you're going to have to try to pump as much blood in there as you can. Um, that's a principle that's been around for a very long time. It's been very effective. So you're going to need both. You're going to need a little bit of heavy training or a lot of bit of heavy training and a lot of bit of pumping out the muscles. When you're trying to get strong, you can never go wrong. And that is it from supertraining.tv.